John Major has now stepped forward in an attempt to brown nose David Cameron for whatever reason. Only he knows. He is angry, really angry. I am angry. He appears on the Andrew Marshall, I guess, to vent that anger. But there are more holes in his claims than an already used tea bag. <laughs> is angry at the way the Leave campaign are conducting themselves and the information they are giving the public. In an interview with Andrew Marr, which is now doing its rounds on YouTube, he made a statement that the Leave campaign is releasing an unforgivable fraud on the British public. One thing that springs to mind as a result of this claim is the election fraud. Have a word with your new best mate, I think, John. Andrew Marr cleverly asked Sir John about the deceit of the campaign and was he aiming this at Boris? John Major answered the best way that he knew how in his very monotone voice. The deceit goes much wider, but as a leader, Boris could have stopped it. A bit like Cameron could have stopped the electoral fraud from happening, which resulted in being investigated by no less than 10 police divisions and then declaring in a packed parliament, not all MPs are perfect, really. The Leave campaign has had nothing to do with the British public, whatever that means. By this time, John Mayer seemed to be mumbling to me. I had to play that bit several times to try and work out what he was actually saying. What they have said about leaving of the EU is completely dishonest. Now, didn't David Cameron first deny the Blairmore Fund? I think he did. Even mentioning the onset of a Third World War to get his point across on staying in. I guess that must be honest. Major, because I no longer respect him enough to call him sir, Major then starts to take the mickey out of Boris, saying that he must have had a day trip to Damascus because at one point he wanted to stay in. If we remember the documentary a few weeks ago, it might even be a little bit longer than that, Boris has always been, or he certainly was in the programme, anti-Brussels, even when he's lived there for a while. But we have all seen the videos when, we, uh, when Cameron was an EU sceptic some years ago. Major also touches on the fact that the Brexit campaign is not letting us know properly the benefits if we leave and that it will impact the ordinary everyday man and women of this country. Now, first Major, I am far from ordinary. And with regards to having an impact, some of your so-called Remainer friends have rigorously voted for cutting £30 a week from the sick and disabled. No mention of an impact there. Kettle and black spring to mind. Now the Brexit campaign need to tell us what it really would be like to leave, John Major said. Yeah, because we are really going to have a third world war if we don't stay in. Now, with regards to trade, this is what John Major had to say. Today, this morning, an extra 300,000 jobs would be created because we would be free to strike our own trade deals with America and Australia and China and other countries. Well, it's fantasy. Uh, firstly, we have something like 3 million jobs connected. I'm not saying they're wholly reliant, but connected to our present trade with Europe and essentially with a single market. I gather their current policy today is that they will leave the single market. It would also be a socking great hole, according to every commentator, in our public finances. So these promises of expenditure on the National Health Service or elsewhere are frankly fatuous. They are a deceit. We would lose a huge amount in terms of national income through trade, the small businesses who sell their goods to Europe, who would sell less because if we people would lose their jobs, we would find ourselves in a much worse position. And the Leave campaign can turn to no serious organisation who believes what they have said about the economy and about the future of Britain and the single market. So we... As far as I'm concerned, that's rubbish. Statistics show that if we were to leave, we would later become the biggest single market in Europe, accounting for 21% of its exports, and that's more than its second and third largest markets combined. He then went on to say he wasn't personalising it when Andrew Marr asked him a direct question rather than skip round the edges. Is Boris a liar? 
Now, bear in mind, Major mentioned Boris right at the beginning of the interview, stating that he could have stopped the deceit of Brexit. But when it came to a simple fact, he did start to claw back a little bit of credibility. And I'm talking about the sum on the Brexit battle bus. This, I feel, is where Boris has let himself down. Even I did the research on another episode and came up with a decent figure, as reported by full fact, that does not come as outlandish as the sum on the bus. And Boris has had some stick over this. But Major, as always, run away with this, saying if they can't be honest and factual on the sum, how can we trust them on anything? Hmm, Blairmore. Extension on the case from the Electoral Commission? He is also angry at how the British people are being misled. What the? We are being given inaccurate information, which means us being misled. Once again, the head of, of immigration pops up, which in my view is scaremongering. And then he states we are a great country. Is that in or out, Sir John Major? I'll let him have that, Sir Justice, once. Be clear, Sir John. Not I mean, since on stealth. Listen, the EU wants Turkey to join. The British government wants Turkey to join. The Prime Minister has said he would pave the way from Brussels to Ankara. So this is not a complete fan. Use it's quite no, possible. No, 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 it, this, this election, this, this decision, could be with us for 20 or 30 or 50 years' time. During that period, the Turks have been negotiating for the best part of 30 years a whole series of different things that have to be negotiated. They've negotiated one of about 30. Even if they were able to reach agreement with the European Union, any one nation in the European Union could veto their joining. The French have already said they would have a referendum on that issue. The Germans almost certainly will follow suit. Turkey will not be in the European Union for a very, very long time, if ever for a whole series of practical reasons, and no, the Leave campaign people. know that. Turkey could join the EU, don't be fooled. They could complete joining of the EU in 10 to 15 years. Admittedly, the EU Commission are divided, but the talks are taking place. So to say they are never going to join is a lie, isn't it? The whole EU debate is spiralling out of control. It can be confusing, mind-numbing and bitchy. It is getting to the point where our opinions and our decisions are becoming so clouded, who knows what are we going to vote. But this is what they want, and I'm talking about both sides. Either way, I am still cemented in thought that they are not doing this for our benefit. It is fast becoming about punching the air at the end and being in control of the public purse and a continuation of lies and filling of the pockets. Do you agree? Did you watch the interview? Let me know in the comments below. Share this episode, click the thumbs up and click subscribe so you don't miss out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.